All right, so welcome back to another video on this channel today. We're doing my too good to go down 11 in the Premier League this season. So obviously I saw Sky Sports do this concept a few days ago where they essentially picked a team of players from the teams currently in the relegation battle, which does include Crystal Palace, Wolves, Leeds, Everton, Nottingham Forest, Leicester, West Ham, Bournemouth and Southampton. So nine clubs in the mix to choose from here. And yeah, just essentially picked a lineup of players that they branded too good to go down to the championship next season. So yeah, I thought why not give it a go, but actually have a hint of ball knowledge in my one compared to their one. That was a joke, guys. Or was it? I actually don't know. But um, yeah, let me know if it was a joke down in the comment section below because you'll know as much as I do. But yeah, nevertheless, I'll get into picking my team now. So here is my too good to go down 11. Leave yours down in the comment section below. But yeah, I'll get into mine now. Starting off with the goalkeeper, the man between the sticks, an important position here. And to me, there was only one outstanding option here, to be fair. I looked at Jordan Pickford. I looked at Neto for Bournemouth, who I do think is actually a quite underrated goalkeeper for what Bournemouth wants. But the obvious option was Kaylor Navas. I mean, he's won three Champions Leagues. He's arguably a world class goalkeeper and if he isn't still a world class goalkeeper there's no doubt he was you know a few years ago 36 years of age experienced at the top level like I said three Champions Leagues one La Liga four club world cups he's just an absolute serial winner and to be honest I'm still absolutely bewildered and astonished that Nottingham Forest even managed to you know pick that guy up in January from PSG on loan and but yeah just plain and simple Keylor Navas is an absolutely top quality goalkeeper adds a lot of experience to this Nottingham Forest relegation battle which will be key for them and yeah is no doubt the best goalkeeper I could have gone for in this video so yeah yeah, Keylor Navas is in goal. Now onto the right back position and there was two main ones for me. It was between Ricardo Pereira of Leicester who I do think a lot of people are forgetting actually exists at this stage to be fair and you know is a very competent right back and Serge Aurier of Nottingham Forest but I've gone for Aurier just because I think in terms of what Nottingham Forest want in a right back which is essentially just to be really really stable defensively. The 30 year old is very stable defensively. 2.0 tackles 1 per 90, 1.38 interceptions per 90 and 1.6 blocks per 90. Also wins 61% of his aerial duels and tackles successfully 69.6% of his dribblers that he does challenge and yeah overall like I said a lot of experience in him as well 30 years of age played in the Champions League semi-final last year with Villarreal played for Spurs got to a Champions League final with them and of course you know achieved some honours at PSG as well and yeah I think he's just a really really sturdy defender Serge Aurier and in recent years he's kind of calmed down a bit because he was a little bit of a loose cannon at Spurs and yeah I just think he's a really solid defender for what Nottingham Forest want in this system and uh, yeah is you know okay in terms of visibility on the ball as well so Serge Aurier is going in at right back to Nottingham Forest players to start this video actually. And now onto the first centre back in this list, Joachim Anderson of Crystal Palace, 26 years of age and yeah, in my opinion is a quality centre back at Premier League level. Very good in terms of his ability on the ball which is shown in his 9.9 .9 long passes completely per 90 stat. 0.46 key passes for 90 which for a centre back is pretty goddamn good. 4.6 passes into the final third per 90 which once again is really good for a centre back. 6.28 clearances per 90. And yeah, obviously he's comfortable on the ball but is a solid defender as well. It was between him and really Mark Gehi. Oh, spoiler that Mark he's not on the team but uh, yeah I've gone for Wackham Anderson over Mark Gehi simply because I think he is the more complete defender all round and yeah I think he would be a good asset for a lot of Premier League clubs especially ones that do want to play an on the ball style of play going forward so um, yeah I've gone with Wackham Anderson as the first centre back. Now onto the next one maybe a little bit of a shock because he's one that probably will go under the radar in terms of people who do make their teams here but I've gone for a Southampton option here Armel Belakotchap who I think is a really quality centre back for his age 21 years of age and already a German international was called up to the World Cup squad there in December which shows a lot about his quality. Yep, yeah, a really good defender, we've got a lot of stature as well which means he's imposing at centre back which is obviously important. 2.53 interceptions per 90, 6.99 ball recoveries per 90 and he tackles 77.8% of his dribblers as well so yeah he is obviously is a very good defender in that sense and is comfortable on the ball as well and yeah I think has a lot of potential to improve especially given the fact he's 21 years of age and I remember watching this guy in one of his first Southampton games this season, I can't remember who they played against but one of the first games he played in this season I thought this guy's got something about him to be fair and yeah ever since I've really liked Belakotchap and yeah I think the stats back him up that he is a real talent and I think would be a very good option for a lot of Premier League clubs should Southampton go down which is in my opinion likely. Now onto the left back position now this one was a real flip of a coin between a Nottingham Forest left back and a Leicester left back like the right backs as well. Reynan Lodi is the one I went for but Timothy Castagna was obviously the one that I was debating with but yeah Reynan Lodi in the team 24 years of age nearly 25 1.54 interceptions per 90 1.48 tackles 1 per 90 which is okay for a left back 
and 6.2 ball recoveries per 90. Overall, exactly what Nottingham Forest want in a defender, which is for him to be capable defensively, but he's also capable offensively as well, having played for Atletico Madrid. He's obviously got quality, is on loan this season at Nottingham Forest, and if they do stay up, he would be a really good acquisition for them if they, you know, can do that if they stay up. And yeah, another one as well that we were kind of surprised that Nottingham Forest got in the door in the summer because of obviously his quality and his, yeah, you know, CV playing with Atletico Madrid for the last few years and doing all right there, to be fair. So yeah, Brennan Lodi is at left back, and um, yeah, that completes my back four. Now onto the midfield, they've gone for a 4 3 3. So we've gone for a number six, a number eight, and a number 10, starting off with the number six. It's pretty obvious. Declan Rice, just an absolute shoe in for this team. One of the first names on this team sheet. Obviously, really good in terms of his ability in possession with an 88.6% pass completion ratio, 2.47 progressive carries per 90, and 2.22 carries into the final third per 90. And defensively as well, obviously, offers you some very good output as well. 1.9 interceptions per 90, 63.3% successful dribblers tackled ratio, and wins 62% of his aerial duels as well, which obviously shows how confident he is, both on the ball and off the ball. And yeah, at 24 years of age, he's bound to get a move to a bigger club this summer, no disrespect to West Ham. Chelsea have been looking at him, and Arsenal have been looking at him, and I think he'd be a really good signing for either of those teams. And yeah, I think Declan Rice is one that I really, really rate. Somewhat underrated by quite a few Premier League fans, which really does surprise me, but um, yeah, I think Declan Rice is absolutely quality, as the stats show there, and even still in the eye test, I think he's an absolutely brilliant holding midfielder, and is most certainly the best option I could have gone for in this video. Maybe Maybe someone like Wilfred Ndidi was up there or Romeo Lavia but I've gone with Declan Rice because I think yeah as I said he's one of the first names on the team sheet that I did consider for this video. Hey there why are you not subscribed huh? Unless you are in which case just ignore this message. According to the stats nearly 80% of you aren't subscribed to this channel. What the fuck's that about huh? Subscribe! And leave a like while you're at it as well. Cheers. Love ya. Now onto the centre midfielder, the number 8 next to Declan Rice in this team. Again, a pretty obvious one. Yuri Tielemans, just an absolutely brilliant player and uh, yeah, finds himself surprisingly in this relegation battle. 25 years of age and yep, yeah, just so, so short in possession. 7.48 progressive passes per 90, 7.01 passes into the final third per 90 and 3.38 shot creating actions per 90. But yep, yeah, Yuri Tielemans was one that had to go straight in this team for his quality. He's a free agent in the summer so I think there'll be quite a few teams that will be looking at him I'd really be interested to see if someone like you know Arsenal or Man United who I think would be perfect for if they do go from in the summer but um yeah he's bound to leave Leicester in the summer anyway whether they get relegated or not but for now of course he's playing in a team that are in a relegation battle and that's why he is once again a very easy option in this team and now onto the number 10 need I say his name James Madison nine goals and six assists in 20 matches played for Leicester this season arguably a one-man show at Leicester this season I've done a video on that already if you want to go and check it out on the channel but um yeah 4.63 shot creating actions per 90 which is absolutely obscene for a centre midfielder. He draws 2.62 fouls per 90, he makes 2.54 key passes per 90, and has 4.77 progressive passes per 90 as well. And yet yeah, overall, once I said, you can just see from the player himself, he just glides through midfield, he's a very creative player. Overall, at 26 years of age, once again, a player that might be looking for a move in the summer, no disrespect to Leicester, but um, yeah, James Madison, a shoe in in this team, and probably up there with Declan Rice for the first name on this team sheet. Now onto the right winger, and there was quite a few options that could have gone here. There was Wilfred Gnonto, who was a competitor for both sides of the wing really but there was one man I could have gone for here and that is Michael Alise 21 years of age currently playing for Crystal Palace and yeah just a really creative winger on that right hand side he's very capable obviously at dribbling at taking his man on passing the ball he's very good obviously you know his signature move which is crossing the ball into the box which he's really effective at and in that creates 1.07 shot creating actions from dead ball scenarios which is a really good record 2.18 key passes per 90 and 2.01 successful take-ons per 90 he averages and even defensively as well really puts in a shift for this Crystal Palace team 1.11 tackles 1 per 90 he averages and tackles 45.7% of his dribblers successfully and yeah like I said at 21 years of age has a lot of room to improve he's kind of part of that you know band of right wingers who are just really saucy left footed wingers like your Mares, your Rafinha your Hakim Ziyech for example but yeah I think Elise was the obvious choice to go for in right wing given his you know quality off the ball and on the ball and at 21 years of age obviously has a lot of you know room to improve as well so yeah Elise is in at right wing and is too good to go down in my opinion. Now onto the left winger again pretty obvious here Wilfred Zaha like I said Wilfred Gnonto was another option that was competing for this place as well but I've gone for Wilfred Zaha pretty obvious he's Crystal Palace's best player I think it's fair to say and as you can see by when he's injured or when he's got lack of form as he is right now for Crystal Palace they're a completely different team without him they're a completely different threat going forward without him and even still in the poor enough season he's having for his standards this season he's averaging 3.2 fouls 1 per 90 1.83 carries into the penalty area per 90 and even still does a little bit defensively as well with his 41.4% dribblers tackle 
tackle success ratio as well. But yeah, once again, Wilfred Zaha, he's a very direct winger, pacey, great dribbler, and obviously decent technically as well. Gets in goal, involved with goals and assists on his day as well. And um, yeah, I think he's definitely go too good to go down. At 30 years of age, maybe it's his last chance this summer with his contract running out to you know get that big move that he's wanted for years now. But yeah, he's definitely good enough for a bigger club. I think we've seen that over the years with his catalogue of you know performances for Crystal Palace. But yeah, like I said, an easy choice here at left wing. Wilfred Zaha has to go into the team, which completes a Crystal Palace flank with Zaha and Elisa. And finally, the striker. It was between two options here, to be fair, because I'm not going to lie, there wasn't an unbelievable catalogue of strikers to you know go for in this video, really. But it was between Gianluca Scamacca, who's marginally missed out, but the one I've gone for is Dominic Calvert-Lewin of Everton. Just an absolute beast on his day. And don't get me wrong, injuries have massively plagued this form for Everton in the last few years. But you've seen with Calvert-Lewin when he gets into the team consistently. 16 goals scored in that season under Carlo Ancelotti in 2021. And then the previous season as well, 13 goals in 1920 when Carlo Ancelotti took over halfway through the season as well. Yeah, just an absolute beast in the air, Calvert-Lewin. 6.04 aerial duels, 1 per 90. And a 52.4% take on success ratio, which is actually, you know, shows his ability on the ball as well. And that he's not just a big log up front. But yeah, I think there's a lot of teams that could really do with someone like Calvert-Lewin. You know, kind of a old-fashioned number nine, I suppose, so to speak, just because of how physically dominant and physically capable he is. And this guy will score goals in the right system. And especially, I think that when he becomes fit again, fully fit again, and gets a run of games in this Sean Dyche team, I think he'll be an absolute dream and will be a cheat code in the Sean Dyche system. And we saw in Sean Dyche's first game in charge where they played Arsenal and Calvert-Lewin was absolutely instrumental in that win. And yeah, as I said, once he gets fit and once he gets a run of games in this Everton team, I think he'll be an absolute animal for this Everton team under Sean Dyche. And yeah, I think does offer a massive purpose in Everton's team. And uh, yeah, I think is the best option to go for in this video for the fact that he is too good to go down for a player of his quality. So yeah, that's my team on screen. As you can see, let me know your team down in the comment section below. Like I said, I'm interested to see how, you know, differing my team is to yours. But yeah, leave a like on the video if you did enjoy. It would be massively, massively appreciated. And also if you could subscribe to the channel as well, that would be hugely appreciated. We are closing in on 2,000 subscribers on this channel as soon as we possibly can. So every single one of you that hits the subscribe button will be an absolute legend and help me get there as soon as possible. And um, yeah, I'll chat to you guys in my next video. So yeah, chat to you later.